up a bonus. I guess that's why you're like Welcome, welcome. This is Simply King Podcast. This is your boy Rodney Perry King himself. And you just tuned into the Soulfully Conscious Podcast for humans simply being humans. And today we are in studio. For the first time in all of this this whole pandemic time with this new setup. Mm. And it's great. And we have a very, very special guest here with us today. I want you all to give a great, great welcome to Simply King, to the Simply King podcast, being the lovely Imani Watson. You know, maybe I should be like Imani Watson. <laughs> I, however you want to say it. Imani and whatever Watson. Whatever comes naturally. <laughs> yes, that is I. It's so, me, Imani. Before we get into who you are and to this conversation, this great conversation we're about to have, I want to ask you a personal question. Okay, I'm ready. This personal question will be our Twitter check in for today. Let me get my sounds. Let me get do I put it? I got my sounds in oh, here. Oh yeah, you got all these fancy little Yeah, yeah. You know, I didn't put it, I didn't put that one. I didn't keep that one on there. But it's all good. I'm really into this. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty cool. I'm gonna make sure I leave that one on there from now on. But the Twitter check-in. Okay. sound effects then um so the twitter check-in for today is we are going to share and i want to ask you Mm -hmm. what are the last two things Mm -hmm. you bookmarked on twitter on twitter my last two bookmarks and i got i'm gonna pull mine up too and and i I, I ain't lying let's do it i ain't lying i got mine pull it up right here one thing about you can do your uh, first one, and then I do. You want to okay go back, back and, and forth. forth? Yeah, we can go back and forth. One thing I must say about us Gemini's, yeah. like I keep it real. Mm-hmm. It's hard for like I don't know why people think we're two faced. Like we're very honest people. I like, agree. People one hundred. Okay, so let's see what are what are my how how you get to it. This is my so so you're not you recent, you know how to get to it. Don't, don't oh okay. I, rec- <laughs> <laughs> like, here I recently deleted the app. Oh. From my phone because I called myself like trying to remove like kind of scale back on social media a little bit to be honest um and so i deleted the app from my phone but um i don't know how to get to oh nope that's not it either so the way they should get to it you should just kidding found it you found it here last two last two actually i'm gonna do the first one so from someone called professional internet user Wondering how much the angry black woman stereotype in the office is due to the fact that black women are often the only ones willing to speak up and state the plain truth. I do remember bookmarking this one earlier. Damn, not that that was the bookmark. I know. I was like, oh, I got to come back to I this. I wanted to read the um, the comments. Like yeah. in the moment, I couldn't like read the, the yeah. thread. Yeah. But I was like, oh, yeah, I, I def- this resonates with me. Yeah. So I'm going to come back and read it. Do you do it like that? Like you'll say, oh, this is interesting. I want to come back and engage with this later. Yeah, I think I do that pretty often. Yeah. Um, usually it's usually I think it's videos that I didn't can't like watch okay. in that moment. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, okay. That, that I feel like sense. I bookmarked the most. If I can read it, usually I'll bookmark it, come back to it or, you know, possibly read it in that moment, depending on how long it is. I was going to say, are you, do you actually come back to your bookmarks or do you? I, like... I, I feel like I've made a trend of it because I think okay. I almost remind myself to check my bookmarks when I bookmark something. Okay, gotcha. Like, <laughs> oh, like, let me look at the other stuff. Like, what, else I, yeah, what else did I bookmark in here? You know what I'm saying? Because I usually just forget to, like, I'll I, bookmark a whole bunch of stuff. I feel that. Yeah. And I feel like they should, I don't know, they should do something about that. So book. the last thing I bookmarked is the Matrix Resurrections trailer, which I watched. Okay. Early today. That's coming out on HBO Max on December 22nd, and it's look fire. It look fire. So I'm not into that. I'm not in that the world. The Matrix? No. You never seen Matrix? Yes, but I'm not into, I don't keep up with whatever their universe, what's happening in that universe. So. Um. Well, no, this is well after the trilogy, well after okay. all the things. See, I, so yeah, yeah it's, none of, it's none of that. You gotcha. know what I'm saying? So, I might check in. We'll see. Yeah, 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 in it. You know, if you like Oh, yaya. boy, you shouldn't have said <laughs> I'm selling this movie, y'all. So, um, I'm after it. consideration, yes. I might be checking it out. Uh, <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, okay, okay. Also, yeah, I'm, I want you to uh, send me those bookmarks. I'm going to put them on. Put them oh, on you're going to, okay. Too. Absolutely. put them on screen, too. So, give me the second one. Okay, oh, let's see what the... Oh, this second one is not going to make sense to anybody. 
You want me to read it? Hell yeah. No one's going to understand it. Okay, but I'll but, no, it's, it'll be on screen. Okay, it says, gotta know the spots. And then the emoji with the little dollar sign and the tongue. South Shore Drive, 53rd through 57th on weekdays, always free parking. So, I shouldn't... Now the secret's exposed. So, there was this thread. Um, I can't remember exactly how the thread goes, but it was like, your soulmate is in Hyde Park. And then someone retweeted and was like, no, they're not. It ain't no fucking parking over there. Word. I can't even get to them. So, how are they my soulmate? And so, I was like reading that thread because I'm like, oh, well, that's funny because it's true. Yeah. Like, it, Hyde Park, you can't. There's no parking. So, good luck. Everybody knows that. And so, this person like in the thread, and I bookmarked this because I'm like, oh, I might need to know this for a future reference. They were like listing where you could, I guess, get free parking. Mm-hmm. Like, but so, apparently, it's South Shore Drive 50, between 53rd and 57th on weekdays. Mm. That sounds right, but I can't picture what that looks like right now. But I'm gonna go find out. I know exactly. He might have just put me on to where to park. I know exactly what it is, and it's still hard to it's find still, a park. It's free. I never. But it's free. Yes. I mean, okay. but that don't mean you necessarily want to park there. No, no, no. You can park like. there, but you it's, it's still gonna be. It's, you still got the same issue. You're still gonna have a struggle. You're Trying probably to gonna have to go around a couple times. Like, trust um, me, yeah. Trust me, yeah. It's 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 yeah. So that one kind of wasn't. I thought it was honestly gonna be more juicy. Yeah. To be honest, but yeah, I was spared today mm. because. I'm like, you never know. These bookmarks. I know. That's why. They vary. That's why it just came to me out of nowhere. I was they like, vary. and I, then it's I thought, one. but then I thought, damn, well, I know, I know, I just booked some shit some just shit. A, oh. for a few days ago. And I was like, maybe I ain't bookmarked none in a few days. Uh, I'm, about to, I'm about to eat expose. Well, what's that myself. second one looking like, though? Cause See, I'm, I'm good until... Yeah, I'm good. Oh, I'm yeah. glad I said top two. Oh, man. Because if I would have said, like, top four... Man, we wanted Ooh. some foolery. No, we didn't need none of that. We didn't need none of that. We didn't need none of that. Now, for damn sure, couldn't, you know, put it right there. You feel me? I okay. couldn't put it on the thing. Okay. So I'm glad... Because it would have been even more edited than I had to do. So I'm glad I did. So <laughs> my last one, and we can get into the conversation, is one that I'm definitely, definitely Looking forward to. putting on my fucking this screen right here. Because everybody needs to just get into the glory of what I bookmarked. It's a little bit salacious. I'm scared. It's a little even seen as possibly pornographic by some people. Okay. But it's this motherfucking gumbo pot pie. Oh, have you really seen good. this? No. Y'all, look at this. Yeah, you don't have to throw look that on the Look at this. Throw that on the Shout screen. out to at girl Tierra. I think that's how you say your okay. name. And, and I don't know if that? you made this or uh-huh. not, but you need to drop the recipe. Whoever you need made to let... it, we need the Oh, details. yeah, she got it. Whatever, wherever she got it from, so she got good. it. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my I'm God. I'm going to be coming, like, once this is all out, I'm going to circle back once you find... The recipe and stuff. Evidently, like, yeah. I think a yeah. homegirl made it, but I'm going to get y'all the details as best as I can no, out I'm of this hungry. tweet. Why would you do that? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but it looked Goodness. good, don't it? It does. It looked good. It but no, let's tap into the main topic. Um, you. Oh, my God. Yes, you are the main <laughs> topic here. So, let us get into who Imani Watson is. So, first... Um, while we was, you know, when we were still, you know, doing sound check and everything, I know that you're from Chicago. Yeah. You're you're currently, you know, a content creative specialist in sorts and sorts and hits and what's all of that. All of the things. Et cetera. But also you are a creative in your own right as well. And I think, you know, I really wanted to not only talk about you, but also talk about the overall process mm-hmm. that I feel like um you have to somewhat almost be in as a creative, but also to the new things that you find yourself having to figure out in the times that we're living in, you know? Yes. Um, shit, sure. you know, just from, like, having to, me, myself, having to really have a really robust and um, thorough way of recording remotely. Yes. And all these different things, this. you know? So, so yeah, anything yeah. can go wrong. Internet, the sound. And it usually will. It usually <laughs> will. Usually in will. Some way. In some way it will. But first, let's talk about you. Yeah, for tell sure. Me, tell me what has driven you to start being an independent creative now? Now, okay, what has driven it now? Yeah. What, how I'll answer that is I'll say it's kind of always been in me. Yeah. Um, but I would say uh, over the past 17 months, I've had more uh, bravery, I guess. I think being confronted with the pandemic and all the 
BS that comes with that uh, made me kind of like almost face uh, my mortality in a way. This I know this is going to make us all going to make sense. I promise. And so it's like, well, what are the things that, you know, bring me joy and things that I like, things I care about, things I want to do? That's outside of my, um, you know, job. So backing up a little bit, I'm professionally a social media marketer Mm -hmm. slash manager uh, for a college. Um, So that's what I do professionally. But I also do, um, you know, content creation for myself. And I was for a minute, I was considering stopping. And then it's like, no you really have no reason not to do it. If it's something that brings you joy, if it's something that, you know, makes you want to get up in the morning, why not do it? So that's, I would say, yeah, that's what would be the driving force of why I'm creating now. Um, And I've done multiple things in the past. I've had a podcast before with my mom. Um, I've done a YouTube channel that is now, you know, privated. I've tried so many things, um, so many different creative outlets. And I kind of finally feel that, Uh, What I'm doing on Instagram and TikTok is somewhat sticking. So I feel like that's probably going to be my my primary space for a while. Mm. Yeah. I don't know if I answered the question, by the way. I think you did. Yeah. (laughs) I think you you did. Um, I like that answer. Thanks. Because I think it didn't come by way of, um, for me, it felt more, um, I was coming from a really weird place when I really started to, like, really truly creating on a consistent basis Mm -hmm. independently because I was so I don't know I was so gone from and so exhausted from the job hunt after you know post college feeling real down on myself all different types of shit you know and I really truly felt like damn I need to I need to figure this shit out. I need to figure mm. something out. I need to do something, you know? Do something different. I need to do something different yeah. while I'm still trying to figure this thing out. I need an outlet, you know? Yes, and, an outlet. Um, and I feel like, you know, just like the universe always does, brings answers right to me sometimes. Mm. And a friend of mine, because I was going to have a radio show in college, okay. and I've told this story probably a million times on this podcast. Let's hear it again. I was going to have a radio show, and they was dragging their feet. I was too ready. For the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, they was dragging their feet at my school, approved the show two months before I graduated, even though I applied to have oh this show God. in the first semester of my senior year. And in my head, I'm like, yeah, I get it. I get it right here. Then I do it for the rest of the year. It's going to be fly. That would be so funny. It would have been fire. It was going to. It was still going to be called Simply King. It was going to be Simply King Radio. Oh, yep. Right, and if I, I can see that for you. Yeah, and yeah, I was gonna be on that I thing, that really. And my my whole yeah. goal was for it to be almost like this, uh, almost collegiate quiet storm, because okay. we all of the other people's shows were kind of these mimicking um, Breakfast Club type ass shows. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody was talking about public culture, all these different things. I was bringing in, you know, real How helpful much of segments. That, yeah. You know, do we really? Need How much? You know, yeah. So that was my whole thing. It was like, all right, mm-hmm. I need to truly figure out my thing and I came yep. with a, I, as soon as I figured out oh that's all you got to do to get one alright came with a whole proposal mm-hmm. got a few other people involved and my my friend Stretch who's been a guest on the show multiple times mm-hmm. um, threw that at me when I moved here okay. like uh, after uh, after I got settled in for a few weeks that I was here he hit me with with the hey have you thought about doing a podcast and I was like what's a podcast Never even heard of it. Never listened to him before I started actually doing my own. Mm. Dead ass and started listening. Whoa. Yeah, started listening to podcasts. Started listening to podcasts. Started looking up what to do and all mm-hmm. those different things. Oh my god. Yeah, but it, but I, and I, that's I got, a learning curve. And, and I got it out quick though because mm-hmm. I was like, I, yeah, I want to. Yeah, yes. You wanted to go. Like ready. once you figured it out, you're like, yeah, this is what I want to do. Because it felt, it, yeah. it, it, it consumed me. It finally felt like, oh, I'm finally doing something that but I care about. But you really loved it, though. And that's yeah. what I mean. Like, yeah. when you find, I mean, you're, people are blessed to find that. Like, some yeah. people still don't know what that is for mm-hmm. them. And I'm kind of more recently finding that for myself. Mm-hmm. Like, if you if you know what your thing is, you better run with it. Run you know? with because it. Because so many people are walking around, they don't know what's going on. They're lost. They don't know what they want to do. They don't. You know, so that's such a blessing. Like, once it's stuck for you, you're just like, let's do this. You yeah. Know? That's and I a th- blessing. And I think more than anything, for me, it was just like, I really need to, um, yeah, I just really need to stick with this. Because not only did yes. it, it, I thought I was doing this to pass the time for a second. Mm-hmm. And then I realized very quickly how much I enjoyed it 
because I'm doing mm. the thing I, I love to do the most. Just yeah. talk. I'm a talkative this ass nigga. <laughs> love conversation. Oh you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I'm yes, I need this. This is your this is your outlet. That word keeps coming up. This is your outlet. This is my outlet, you yeah. know? And um more than anything, it, it made sense. Yeah. It made sense yeah. to me. I think the medium is one that I was built for. You know, I feel like And I you have it. the voice for it. I take let's, that. Let's give it up for the voice. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I was listening to your podcast and I'm like, you definitely have a radio voice. Like it's very smooth, very Thank clear. You. I'm Thank like, you. yeah. You were destined for podcasting, I'll say that. I'll take that. I'll mm-hmm. take that. I'll take that, you know? For sure. Um, but to, yes, I appreciate that because it's definitely been a, um, an interesting, you know, journey o- overall. Yeah. And that's, and I, I think, imagine. but I think it's, you know, it's all, it's all good and necessary. And I believe, you know, the benefits of all of the work is coming, mm-hmm. you know, and I believe, uh, yeah, I just believe it. I believe in myself. I believe in the ideas of, you know, like you literally just yesterday had a pre-interview with a, with a potential guest. I asked her, how the hell did you find me, Miss Lady? Yeah. And she was just like, well, I often, you know, just go to like different podcast pages or whatever, whatever. And this podcast page, I found, I mean, you, you was right there. So I guess whoever they are, they fuck with you. I was like, who? Yeah, I who don't know. me? Let me know. She hit me with the <laughs> I don't know. And I'm like, I need to know. I need to know. Yeah, who the hell is shouting me out if, I don't even, if I'm not tagged? Yeah, because you want to like say thanks. Uh, yeah, I'm a thankful. Out. I'm thankful. thankful I'm yes. very thankful. So That's a blessing. You also, because you were talking about the content, you also... Are tapping into something that's been something that you you know been doing under wraps. You feel me? And you finally let it out a little bit on the gram. I don't know what you're talking about. Look, you don't gotta know. <laughs> but I, but Stop. I do, but uh, but I do believe that mm-hmm. you know getting into any performing art is mm-hmm. a challenge. You know, and that shit's really scary. Is. That shit's scary as hell. But you out here trying to do some music and shit. I'm. I am. I don't know why I hesitate to say this. Why? That's what they said. That's why you gotta, uh, you, gotta you gotta tap in. You I know, know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta just tap, let it. Tap, tap. You gotta let it. You just gotta go all I the way am into it. Pursuing music. Yes. And I don't know exactly what that means yet, though. Okay. What I will say is that I definitely am tapped into songwriting. Yeah. So, you know, I feel like there's different avenues for songwriters. Like, I don't have to be the artist, I don't have to be the one performing the music or whatever. Yeah. Um, I feel like I'm pretty skilled at like getting into other people's minds and like this is most honestly let me be very honest most of the stuff that i've written like in terms of hip-hop yeah songs are like from the perspective of someone else so like that's cool for a song right that's what that's, would that's, megan the stallion say if she was on need. this beat you know like yeah. well like if you're like a ghostwriter or something not that she would ever use one not saying that but i'm saying like you know it's a valuable skill to have. So I'm tapping into that for sure. Maybe maybe eventually I'll like become an artist and like produce an EP or something. Like I feel like that's a possibility for me. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I Just like explore that. it. Like I really feel like we all owe it to ourselves. Like this is like my biggest thing now. We all owe it to ourselves to like pursue whatever our passions is or something that we've always wanted to do. Like I'm damn near 30 years old. I feel like I've kind of suppressed it, like the music bug for a yeah, while. Yeah. And like when I had this like moment of reflection or whatever, like what I was telling you over the pandemic, I was like, well, what what, what reason do I have not to do it? You know, yeah. it's like, okay, I'll do it for a few months. If I don't like it, then I could do something else. But yeah. I'm, it's really sticking. Like I, I really enjoy it. So, I love that. Yeah. I love that. So what I think, what I think about that more than anything is that it's tough. You didn't choose Man. an uh, art form that was the thing that so that we have a countless number of people who've been able to do it and do it well. Right. There's people who still to this day have been doing it since, oh since you know what I'm saying? Years and years. And years, and years and years and years. And they are barely still feeling like they are out the, you know, out the blocks. You yeah. feel me? And so it's something that, um, but I think, you know, with true talent and work, You'll get yeah. you you'll get what you deserve. I think the difference for a lot of people, and I, I've said this on multiple occasions, said this on another element, shout out to another element podcast, is that the thing that I always want for any um performant, musical performant artist is for them to understand they have to set the level that they want to be on. And I yeah. remember when I had aspirations to be in like music management and shit like that when I was in damn 
undergrad. Mm-hmm. That was what I used to tell people who were who wanted to just some help with something or just wanted okay. somebody to assist them with what the things they're doing. It's like set your level, set the level you want to be mm. at, so that that's your benchmark. Yeah, that you makes know? a lot of sense because yeah, but it also it also prepares you for what you want to create for yourself, mm-hmm. and once you and then also sets you up to not be um, I disappointed. Guess, yeah, disheartened because mm-hmm. you feel like damn, I should be Beyonce. And it's like, should you? Know? Well, hold on. But it's no. like that reality is hard when you're in it. For some people, that shit is real so, hard for you when you. I in feel it. like people need to be realistic, okay? But like, I'm not, I but I guess I'm that's speaking you. to what you're saying. That's so, exactly what I'm saying. Like you, yes, if, set if, your. If you, if you didn't do that premeditation, right, right, that's right. going to fuck the you up. The intentionality. That's yeah. what it is. That's what it is. Yeah, it's you know, I'm going into this. To do this or like this yeah. is what the I guess the desired outcome yeah. is and what success looks like for me. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know if I can fully say what that is for me yet. I've gone back and forth with it. I've I've said, OK, I'll just be like a songwriter and just try to get a couple placements or something like yeah. if I could literally like get on a song that streams. At this point, mm-hmm. that would be cool. Like, I actually mm-hmm. would be pretty impressed with myself if I could pull that off. But, um, but then, then some days where I'm, I'm really feeling myself. I'm like, wait, maybe I could be the artist, and like, I can like, you know, record an EP. Da da da. So I think at this stage of my exploration in music, I don't have an answer for that. I, I've been kind of giving myself a little grace and saying like. Really figure, get your footing, like learn. I've been taking uh, music theory lessons. I have like a piano. I've been taking lessons. I've been Mm. doing voice work. Like I'm really trying to like explore the different areas of music. And that's good. To see, well, what is it really that you're getting at? Because you like this, but what about it? I think that's great. I think that's great. Because more than anything, I think it's the fact that you are doing the work. There's a lot of people who don't yes. do the work. It's a lot of people yes. who genuinely come out here and present songs and they expect us to take that serious. They're just like, yeah, you know what? That's my, this my, Studio. This, check me out. This, da, 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 da. You, you like Whatever. music? <laughs> do you like music in you like, general? You like music? Because I, I got some. I got some, you know? Now, is it good? I don't you know. know. You tell me. If you like That's it, so you know, funny. follow me on Instagram type shit. Period. My thing is, there's a way to develop, mm-hmm. do yeah. certain works, get yourself further ahead in particular knowledge. Yeah. Before you even put out anything, mm-hmm. and then once you start, you know, trickling things out, you're coming through with knowledge. You're coming through with a base. Yeah. You're coming through with a foundation. But I think, you know, everybody you doesn't plan that way. No, I f- I don't know. I feel like a lot of it is just kind of people just doing stuff. Hell I don't, yeah. I, I don't know. In the modern era, with the exception of a few really standout artists, I feel like a lot of this stuff is just niggas was like, there was a beat in the background and like people just felt the spirit and they like, oh, we should record this. Like, you know, no real like thought behind it. And that's fine because a lot of people like that. I enjoy some of that kind of music. Not gonna lie. But I do personally, I like to approach music with like forethought and some sort of like concept or planning or some an I- idea something that's just how i work so i ain't mad yeah. at that because yeah. I, I mean everybody's not meant to be improvisationalist you're right and, that's um, true that is a skill in itself and um it is. i don't know it for is. me i think uh that i am um, how can i say i think i've learned and i think i've created new phases of how i show up as a creative okay and for me it's truly been a, a world of trying to figure out how to really present me the best way, you mm-hmm. know? And it, and it sounds, uh, yeah, it's really easier said than done in certain ways yeah. because you then end up having to deal with your own shit. Things that have nothing to do with the art. Yeah. Things that have nothing to do That's with the, your things. You have your own whole ass, you know, mm. whole your own personal pandemics. Yes. Your own personal things that are sicknesses, Listen. torturing you, making you anxious. You have to put up preventative measures. Are you going to follow it? Are you not? You get caught up. You got COVID. Here it is. What you going to do? Now you got to sit your ass down and, you know what I'm saying, get this shit out your system. It's so much. But you can. this can be something that you put onto yourself to be mm-hmm. in your own way. And I think, you know, 
that's something that I feel like I've almost like had a a, a, a weird cycle of trying mm-hmm. to figure out how to continuously get out yeah. of my way and stay the hell out of my way. You oh know? my gosh, that is. Thank you for putting it like that. Because okay. I do feel like often I get in my own way. Yeah. It's like, no, this is this is a great idea. Just go with it. At least, you know, try it out. I'll be like, no, this... I'll literally, like, come up with all types of reasons why it won't work before I even attempt to do something. It's like, no, like, stop. Like, even just the songs that I've... The little few things that I've posted uh, on Instagram, you don't know the turmoil I went through before I posted those things because it's like oh what are people are gonna think about it what if they think it's tried to and at a certain point like as a creative and I'm like I have to remind myself of this daily it's like you're either gonna put it out or you're not you know what I'm saying like yeah. you're either going to create or you're gonna come up with the, an excuse as to why you're not you know um if you feel compelled to do it then do it I feel like um there's always going to be room for improvement there's always going to be, you know, better ideas. You can iterate, whatever. But I feel like if you never give yourself that um, space to, honestly, let me just be plain. A lot of it is like ego, you know. A lot of it is people not wanting to embarrass themselves. You know, if I put this paint, if I post this painting, and people don't get it or they think it's ugly, whatever, you know, like it, how is that going to make me feel like? gonna hurt my ego or did I post it because like I like it and I felt like this is what I wanted to share this is what I wanted to contribute you know what I'm saying um I have to think like that I have to just say this is what I'm contributing to the world yeah but if, you, if you don't like it that's fine not everyone's gonna like your art so that's true yeah that's true but I do think it's yeah I think I like that I like that and I think it's a great pivot point to what I've noticed, um, at least within my own history of, you know, within my own studies of and research of how art has changed over time. Mm-hmm. In most cases, it's usually coupled with some very big event that's happening okay, yes. in the world, you know? Something that's going on, war, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> just any type of misery, depression, the Great Depression, the recession, so many different things can happen, you know? Yeah. And I think now we're all living in something that is truly, uh, uh, you know, a, one, a once-in-a-lifetime type of situation for a lot of people. And a, with, a, you know, a pandemic, living amongst a pandemic and being, you know, really on edge. Like, yeah. we're in this collective sense of anxiety that is um, weird. And it's, like, indefinite. Because we yeah. don't really know when it's gonna end. Yeah, so and we, everyone's on edge. And we keep we keep you know trying our best to make it seem like, oh, okay, so because we can do this now, it's better. It's because over. we yeah, it's but it's still folks. It's still impacting the way we live. So, yeah, you know. Yeah, we have to keep all of this in mind as we try to create. You yeah. know, so yeah. yeah. But do I want to ask you? Do you believe there will be a um, sort of renaissance mm-hmm. of sorts? Mm-hmm. to uh, come out of this time or it's actually happening as we speak? Um, I feel like the answer is yes. I do feel like that will definitely happen. I don't know if it's... I don't know if I would say it has happened yet. Me either. Um, I... My, uh, no, I don't think it has happened yet. Um, but I feel like as we start to get to the tail end of some of this madness that we're we're currently like tensions are very high right now um and i feel like people are maybe a touch distracted from maybe the type of level of art that they would create otherwise i feel like once we start to figure this out for real for real we get more comfortable with the endemic that's probably going to become we're going to see a blossoming of like creativity because i feel like People feel stifled right now. People feel, like we said, anxious. They're they're not sure what's going to happen. And I feel like those bubbling emotions are eventually going to all have to come out, which will, I hope, lead to great art, you know, art that we're talking about for, like, years to come. Like, people are talking about, um, like, Kendrick's album. People are saying, like, it might be just yeah blowing everybody else out of the water it so could. stuff like that yeah it certainly you know? could i think um i'm biased so i'm probably gonna like it regardless right um, right probably <laughs> very similar to yeah. how people treated you know kanye and, and drake's album people Just gonna like it regardless facts, you know facts. um which is okay if that's how you feel about your music or maybe that could usher it in you know yeah it could i think that um 
We are in a very interesting phase of life where people are able to make so much more money and have different pathways to making money mm -hmm. from um, from just art and social media providing a space to where that, if anything, you can make money just from that, from people just mm -hmm. having influence within that space. I think um, so much of what we've been doing for quite some time has been unsocializing ourselves because we're on our phones more than anything. Yeah. And now sure. I think we are getting this sensation of like, Oh, no, I want to be in front of people again. I want to be in close proximity mm -hmm. with people. It's almost this reminder, like, yeah, get outside. Get, yeah. to, get to know folks, you know, so I can see. Hmm. I can definitely agree. I believe it'll be a, um, a resurgence and a renaissance of sorts because definitely. I think about the people who are still creating based off of if this thing didn't exist. Mm -hmm. The shows, the movies, Man. where they they aren't considering this pandemic within it. They're it's just like, doing what they're gonna do. They still create the universe they want to create, and they can. That's true. And I think it will create a, a pathway for um, something that is, you know, very particular. It's like hmm. post pandemic, pre pandemic, or non pandemic type of films. Yeah, like we'll probably be studying it like this in the future, yeah. like pre pandemic works of art, be it sculpture, painting, music, whatever, and then post-pandemic, like, compare and contrast that, you know? That would be very interesting, yeah. like, to study in the future. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that, like you said, people are craving that connection. Yeah. Um, I, wrote, I don't know when we're going to get to this, but people, I feel like, right now, are really desperately craving connection. Mm -hmm. um, when we were quarantined slash social distancing, all that kind of stuff... I can speak personally. I went through it. Mm. It was really hard, um, you know, not seeing family, friends, et cetera. And it just, it felt stifling. So a lot of those emotions are going to have to come out. And I think a lot of it is going to come out through art. Mm. Like we're going to see some, see, hear, witness some crazy stuff. I really, truly believe that. Stuff that will um, kind of be uh, symbolic of the time yeah. that we're living in. Yeah. yeah. I think it's... Um... I think it's okay, though. You know, I yeah. feel like this pandemic has, you know, really set us all down, made us sit with ourselves in a different <laughs> way, um, especially just the timing. Mm -hmm. Like, we got to sit with ourselves for a whole 24 hours now. Yeah. You know? Um, and so many people have been able to, to experience that and see that and feel that and see themselves differently. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I welcome it. I welcome yeah. a change. I welcome the, uh, the, we would do a change. the renaissance. You know, we, we were due for it. Mm -hmm. And also, too, I think that, you know, just the track record of where we're going feels really interesting to me in terms me of just too. the um, the placement of black uh, blackness within these things. You know, mm -hmm. like I think about how before it's time, you know, shows like The Watchmen were yeah. literally a show that came out pre pandemic, but had a show mm. filled with people with masks on. That's a good point. It's like, damn, this is crazy. That's so interesting. The context of it all is very different, but it's still yeah. still very much. People of authority having masks on and just what that means, mm -hmm. you know? And so just the fact of this being that a mask so and then it, now we're all kind of, you know, we all have to wear a mask. We all have to, you know, be in this particular space and place for a particular or reason. we all should wear masks. Yes. Some people are very upset about that. Look, put that, <laughs> put that damn muzzle on and shut your ass up. I'm just saying. As they want to call it, a damn muzzle. I um, <laughs> But no, so... To pivot again, yes, within this it. pandemic as well, especially being a creative, um, there's new found creative blocks. Yeah, and um, let's talk about them. Like, what have you noticed either from your yourself or your friends and anyone you speak to who you know creates on a consistent basis? Mm -hmm. That may be something that oh, this is something that you have to deal with now. You didn't have to deal with that before, but now you have to deal with it now. Has, are there any things that kind of mm -hmm. come to mind? Plenty, but I would say the first few things that I'm thinking about are similar to what you spoke on. Yeah. Um, the physical, like you have to record. So yes. me and you are here right now, but if you're, if you can't be in the same room with somebody, you have to work around that. So you have to like figure out oh, how are we going to connect the shit, the shit virtually. Like, da, da. Don't ask me. Okay. I'm not the person to go to for that. Then you have, um, I have a couple friends that do modeling. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You got to meet, you got to link up you know, in an open air space, certain um, indoor spaces that maybe you would have shot in before, yeah. not safe, can't do that. Or they're like, oh, you got to pay an extra such and such cleaning fee, da, mm -hmm. da, da, all this type of stuff. Yeah. It definitely like 
logistically um, for a lot of creatives stifled them. Yeah. Artists, you know, musicians, like no one's touring, you know, like there's no freaking concerts, which I am personally like deeply impacted by. <laughs> personally. Um, I am an avid concert goer, this fun fact or whatever. I love music. I love concerts. So when I like came to the realization that I would not be able to attend a concert, that broke me. My mom and I were actually supposed to see Janet Jackson last July. And uh, so, Essence. no, she was in, uh, she was coming to, I want to say the United Center. She was oh. going to be touring. Yeah. And I'm like, what the, f- I was supposed to see Janet Jackson. Like I was so hurt. My 2020 was like, what the fuck? So it logistically was horrific yeah. uh, for creatives, but just also like mentally too. Mm. Um, I just wasn't really that inspired to be honest with you. Like, it was a lot of doom and gloom. Damn. Like, I can't, like, lie and say that, that all of that didn't impact me. Like, with the whole George Floyd thing and, like, the pandemic. Well, the pandemic and then George Floyd. I don't remember which one came first. The pandemic came first. Um, and then, like, the whole election thing. Like, all of that made me feel like we were, like, living in the end of times. Like, I was feeling real dark and depressed. And it really impacted, like, my creative process. So I had to, like get therapy i know you're a proponent of that i had to get yeah. therapy um i had to like journal and like kind of get out of this cycle of negativity really like yeah. um doom scrolling as they call it like on twitter i don't know if you've heard of that term. i ain't never heard of it no you've doom never heard scrolling. Of that term. okay there's this term called doom scrolling on Damn. twitter or any real any app really yeah yeah uh, just, where just bad just news like, yeah, so you're like, damn, let me get on Twitter and see what the the fucking sad ass news <laughs> updates are. To every day is something. Like you literally go to it because you know it's. Well, you be know that you're you're almost like going on there knowing that you're gonna see some bullshit, yeah. but you can't t- you can't look away. You can't look away. You're like, damn, this is fucked up. Yeah. You just keep seeing it, and yeah. I had to like the month of July, I want to say, and I did a YouTube video. I might unprivate this. I did a YouTube video um, when I was doing my channel. Um, reflecting on my month, it was July. The month of July, I did not engage with social media. Mm. I didn't tweet. I didn't look at tweets. I didn't do none of that. Uh, I did get on YouTube, but everything else, I didn't. I didn't do. It. <laughs> so. And YouTube kind of got that like, you know, you know they kind of I mean, got that like in between. Like, you could get some updates, you know. If I needed to like watch a tea blog or whatever, like I could, I would know what's going tea on. Blog. You you don't watch the blogs. You don't listen to the blogs. I definitely don't. Like okay, you probably don't. Maybe yeah. this is just me. Okay, so there's like a whole bunch of like black tea blogs, like you know, young black women who have like YouTube channels. Uh, okay, and they'll be like, um, today. Uh, money bag, yo, unfollowed Ari, and you know we trying to figure out if they broke up. Like that's <laughs> Hell no. Nah. It's that type of shit. So, yeah, T. Like, literal, like, T. Like, uh, that's what I was, like, I was like, T blog. No, not like, literal. Who was T blog? <laughs> I'm screaming. Third new member Sorry. of TLC or something? What's going on? <laughs> I should have been. Not that a T blog? I should have been more clear. Like, uh, T as in gossip, really, is what I was I see. To. I see what you but, mean. But yeah, you know, I was able to keep up with what was going on to a certain extent, but Twitter, Instagram, I just had to get off that shit. It was too much for me. Mm. And I felt like I was able to kind of like recenter myself and like uh, reprioritize what I want, like what I was trying to achieve um, creatively. And I think around that time was when the bug kind of originally started for me to like pursue songwriting for real. Mm. I had always been like writing. So, like I, I'm a writer. I don't. I don't know if we even got to all of this. Like, my background is, like, journalism, writing. I'm a, a communications major, like you, I believe. Are you a communicator? No, I'm studying marketing. I, I lied. But you seem like they're, they're all in the same vein, really. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, and so yeah. I... No, yeah, I, I, I be They're very sim. You know how to communicate very yeah, well as a, as a marketer. Yeah. And so um, I've had that experience. I used to, like, play around with, like, poetry and songwriting, like, when I was a kid. Mm. But now I'm... Uh, Last uh, July, I was like, mm, what would happen if I, like, let someone else hear it? What would happen? Would they say, this is fucking trash? And then I would just, like, go back to putting it in my notes. Or would they like it? And maybe I could, like, improve upon that and do something else. You know, I don't know. I just decided to give it a try. So it it hurt me, but it also helped me in a way. 
it temporarily hurt me. It ultimately helped me. I love that. Yeah, if that I'm, makes any sense. It does. Yeah. It does. It does. I think, um, yeah, I think that's really good. I know I said a lot. No, <laughs> yes, but that's, that's still good. It's still very good because... It's all about at least finding a solution and still yeah, creating in, in exactly. a day. Um, because these blocks are going to happen. Not only it's from the creative movie. space, but from you know, from a life space as well. You're gonna have it's a inevitable. block in life that feels, you know, truly like a setback that, you know, it's hard to shake, hard to come back from sometimes. Yeah. But you gotta be okay. You gotta be good. You gotta really, you know, persevere more than anything. Um I read this, um, or no, I reposted this thing on Instagram. It was like, you either quit or you keep going. Either, I'm paraphrasing this terribly. It was like, you either quit or you keep going, but you're going to, either way is going to hurt. Like, both paths are going to be painful. You're either going to go through the pain of pursuing your dream and doing what you want to do, or you're going to have to deal with the pain of you never trying and you don't know what could have been, you know? Mm. That's how I perceive. No, I post, think that's true. You know? I think that's true for me. I think I'm realizing how many people, um, at least within the industry that I feel like I, you know, play in with podcasting, really weren't prepared to not be in the same spaces with people. Yeah. And I think it was almost a weird advantage that you know so many of my shows are remote. You know, mm-hmm. so much of what for I already sure. was doing was remote. So once it came, it was like I, I you knew what to do. Show. Yeah. Shout out to you know the damn through the crate. Shout, shout out, out to the crazy. Shout, shout oh out to Tressie and Tressie and Wesley. Cedric. Cedric. Uh, I think Ben's on there somewhere. Ben, yeah, and Ben. Yeah. Oh my God. And, They're and, great. They're and, great. Yes. And They're great. Because because it's like I, I love that show. I, I feel like I, 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 I miss feel it. like I jumped onto it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, at a at a great time to really get a good sense of who they were and was truly yeah. devastated when hers. <sighs> You know, shout out to uh, the guys out there in um, in Denver. I'm, I got to check in on them with uh, popcorn and jalapenos. Oh, yeah, they was like a movie review podcast. Oh, that's really cool. Fucking, oh, really that makes sense. Good. Popcorn and jalapenos. Oh, I got the name. Great. I mean, it was a great yeah. name. But it was just the fact that like people were they had to slow down. Yeah. They had things you know they didn't know what was going on. They had you know people to protect and take care of, of for. Course. So it was like, all right, I think it's not wise for us to be in the same spaces because for we sure. didn't know what the hell to do at particular times. Yeah. And I remember uh, Tracy forever supporting my shit, being like, damn, like, you still, so you still, you know, you still putting out shit. I was like, yeah, you know, start the show. Right. But also, that was already my mold. Right. So me you already knew what to do. talking to people, yeah. me, and also talking off premise was mm. also a thing. Okay. Because hmm. I wasn't just talking about COVID in every episode. I wasn't uh, having, you know, COVID, COVID special 2020, uh, part my 34. God, you know, no. it wasn't none of that. I was still doing me. I was still living in the world that I was living Life in. Life goes on. Because we got to still talk. We still got to talk this shit. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Exactly. But that's just, you know, that's my thing. Um, and here you are, still doing it. Yes. Period. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so the next question I have for you, which I think you know, will be a very good, good, good way to kind of pivot this to, Mm -hmm. is what's the most inspiring piece of content Mm -hmm. you have consumed in the past year? So from September Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of 2021, Mm -hmm. from September of last year, what's something that really, you know, impacted you, felt good? And this could be anything. It don't even have to be, you know, a TV, a movie, a album. It could be you watched one YouTube video and you was just like, oh, this is um, what I wrote. You know, I I have an idea. Okay, But I'm like, oh, do I want to go with this one, though? Because I feel like I've actually seen like. Some pretty inspiring stuff, I would say, over the past year and, just, and some change. Um, one thing, maybe this is cliche to say, I'm, I know other people have said this, but what inspired me in terms of like work ethic is Chloe and Hallie and how they like have have navigated masterfully this whole pandemic. Okay. Like they still were doing their video shoots they have this big old tennis court hell yeah in the back of their home hell yeah they're like well okay we got all this space let's do something with it you know yeah. like, let's make this our uh, backdrop where we can like put a thing what are these called like yeah, little backdrop. backdrops and all types of stuff they it was looking good it looked studio it was, quality it cr- you know they good. worked around they, put, they still put that album out 
they still put and it was amazing mm-hmm. that album was inspiring as well mm-hmm. but just um their dedication to like quality visuals i would say in a time where it was like how how are we gonna put this together logistically like how are we gonna you know do all of this stuff they really you know push through and i was like hmm that's dedication right there um dedication to what this shit don't stop yeah. like this shit don't stop like if you are creative it really does like you could take your breaks that's fine but it never stops yeah that was inspiring to me uh what i wrote down but i mean it's still good um do you watch the daily show yes okay so they do that he's like chops up his stuff for um youtube yeah um and one one of the videos this is like a longer special he did it was called uh remotely educational Mm. And it was like maybe a yeah, I remember thirty. Those. Okay, yeah, little specials, like thirty minutes or so. And this one was talking um, specifically about like how education has um, in the United States has like declined over the years. Number one, there was a segment about like the truth about like uh, capitalism and all types of stuff. There were like little segments as if it was school, like they were teaching you stuff, but it was really like comedy because they're like poking fun at you know all the bullshit that we have been enduring for the past like 20 months how many months has this pandemic been like they were kind of uh poking fun at like how over time like people are trying to uh stop critical race theory uh for being taught like stuff like that they were kind of poking fun at people who are mad at that kind of stuff and so i thought that was very uh well done i feel like it was very well researched but still very funny like you have to check that out it was a really well done. and it made you think you're like damn like our education system is actually fucked like this is how we're teaching the next generation and we wonder why shit's fucked up now it was really interesting to watch and hilarious i, <laughs> I loved uh, trevor Noah. I, I had a conversation with some, with uh, this, this random couple, mm-hmm. and we, they really gave me a lot of their business. Mm. It was cool. Tea? It's, it's not tea. Oh, okay. It's just yeah. to speak to that. It made me think about it. Just the education part. Mm, okay. She, I believe, was from China or Korea, some some Asian country. I want to say China. Okay. Let's say China. Let's say China. And she said that she paid a thousand dollars per semester no per year or semester either way either way because what that's what i said that's what i said for for college she said the only time she actually had to come out of stupid money is when she came to the states and went to grad school oh that's I would have took my ass to China to do grass. I mean, I think if was, I really wanted yeah, to do grass, you know, you know, aspirational people, you know, I, supposed to be ambitious. Amen. Said, you know, I, I respect it. That type of shit, you know. Me. But I just thought that wow. shit was so crazy. A and what she said was, if you, and that's when you go to a good school mm-hmm. and you show promise that you pay less. Oh. Because the state, okay, almost essentially awards you it's for being incentive. someone who is good. Yeah. So if okay. you go to a good school, that school has particular resources. So because they have particular yeah. resources, you don't have to pay that much. Mm. So you, there are other Very schools that you can go to that are, um, what she said, that, um, so if you go to a school where it's like not as, quote unquote, I guess prestigious, prestigious or whatever it is, yeah. Yeah. that's like $4,000 a year. Still oh, great. Okay. So I would take pay, it. They have to pay more because they're not as quote unquote serious. That's so I was like, so if you're not really in the school, you pay more, and if you are really in the school, you, you pay, pay less. less. And I'm like, interesting concept. That's very interesting concept. And in my mind, I'm like, yeah, I think we would all been. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I love class. I'm about to go to class. I mean, shit, it would have really kicked in for me. I would have really. I feel it like it hit different. And what that kind of does for you is, like, make you, it, for me, maybe, maybe it would made me want to, like, figure it out, maybe take time to figure out what I wanted to do. Yeah. I feel like, personally, I was just kind of thrusted into college. I went to, like, a um, college prep high school. Yeah. So, all it, it was just college talk all the time. Always. And it was just like, I didn't have a choice whether I wanted to go to to be honest. And so, I went, <laughs> and I'm just like... I mean, here I am. Do I want? Do I know what I really want to do? Not necessarily, but I was told I have to come here. I feel like when you number one price college fairly, because why the fuck are we paying like fifty thousand dollars? And when you kind of like incentivize doing well, 
I mean, I feel like you would see a lot, you would see people probably take school a lot more seriously and like I don't know I think people's attitude about it ad, attitude about education would change mm. I feel like right now people kind of take college as a joke or like say you don't need college which you you do it depending on what you do, you're do, you trying to do but yeah. then again you don't and so yeah. I feel like it would kind of change our relationship to how we think about college yeah I think more than anything I think more than anything it's it shouldn't be College should never, college and education shouldn't ever be a hindrance to anybody. Obtaining it okay. should never be a hindrance to anybody. And I think there could be certain things done to assist people mm-hmm. and um, and give them the true tools and, yeah. and guidance for them to find what it is that they want to do. Right. You know what I'm saying? But there, there's already this kind of weight put over your head of like being decisive. Time is running yeah. out. You can't keep withdrawing from classes. You can't keep, you know, you don't want to keep drop. You don't want to drop pressure. out. You don't want to do all these things. You want to finish. Yeah. And that can fuck you up, you know? It has fucked so many people up. And then a lot of people, they'll go, they'll accrue the debt, and then they don't even graduate because they're like, actually, I really didn't want to do this. Like, you know, what the fuck am I supposed to do? Well, you there's aren't so even many using people. It. That's a big one, too. That's a big one for a lot of people. It's just like, well, what the fuck was the point? What's the you point? Know? What's the point? What's the point? I just That's actually know. a really good whole nother, like, you could do a whole podcast on that. I could. Like, I, I really could. The but point of college in the modern era or yeah, something like really that. Yeah, I really could. I might I might jot that one down, yeah. to be honest with you. And, and You're welcome. I, I, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate I'm that. I, I take all, <laughs> I take all, take all, take all, the, the, <laughs> all the inspiration, all my, ideas, yeah. whatever. Help, I feel it. Help me not be, you know, um, into the vibes, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Too bad in the things, you feel me? Um, nevertheless, I want to let me get my let me get my 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 thing music. You know what I'm oh, saying? Okay. Let me get my thing going. You feel me? Yeah. Because we're going to send it on, right? Yeah, we about to send it on. So. All I see is colors. Jack. Yeah, you see colors. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. good. That's good. So right now you hear a nice soulful. Sounds of D'Angelo behind my voice right now. And if you are new to the podcast, this is my call to action portion of the episode. Um, And it's something that I want everyone to do. Um, And then you can hashtag, you know what? Hashtag simply kink. Um, Or better yet, hashtag I made it. Mm. For this one. Okay. And um, what the send it on for today is what is your I made it moment <laughs> now this can be something that you maybe has already transpired and would love for you to share that or Man. it could be something that you are you know essentially working and manifesting in this current time Okay. so I'll ask my guest Imani Watson yes give it up for <laughs> Imani Watson you're so funny with this um, introduction Man. Bless, yeah, I want to hear yours first. <laughs> what I would say for me, and it's very recent, very, very recent. I almost hesitate to say that this is my I made it moment because I feel like that's a little bit presumptuous, a little bit. But I, it made me feel good. I'll say that. Um, I posted a reel, an Instagram reel. It actually was a TikTok first. And then I posted it on reels. So whatever. And I was like experimenting with fashion content because like i've always liked fashion but i never like really got all the way into it so i bought a whole bunch of clothes and i was like i'm gonna make some fashion uh tiktoks and reels like do you like this outfit better or do you like this outfit better you know all that kind of stuff because i'm into that um one of those videos that i did randomly went mini viral i don't know what how many numbers viral is considered nowadays, but it was viral for me. Let's say it was viral for the type of numbers I'm used to getting. Look, I get it. Okay, because I'm like, wait a minute, whoa, whoa, whoa. So like, my shit's busting. It was a, um, I was like wearing a, two different skirts or whatever. And that, as of earlier today, like I looked at it, it had, I want to say 18.3K 
view or plays, not views, plays. Or no, plays and views are the same. One is views and one is plays. I don't remember, but it was 18.3K. And I've never had any type of numbers like that ever. And I was like, what in the world is going on? And why is it that this is out of all the shit that I've done before, this particular video? Because I'm like, it took me like 10 minutes to make that video. I have, when I was doing YouTube, I had this conversation with my mom. When I was doing YouTube, I would literally sit and fucking research. I would make outlines. I would like do mini scripting and all this kind Hell of stuff. Yeah, you know, I'm like, I'm, I don't know what I'm talking about. You come correct. For these YouTube videos, you know, they would get like 100 views, maybe 150, 200 on a good day. Um, but this random ass, like, look at this cool skirt, you know, which one do you like better? Um, like just went crazy now yes there are different platforms you know don't compare youtube to instagram whatever but i just it's like for the amount of work that it took to do one versus the other i'm like well maybe this is the wave maybe i need to tap more into this lane and that's why i'm like i kind of started by saying i'm really gonna put more energy into that space like tiktok um reels etc because that seems to work do what works I, and i like yeah. to do it you know um and i think in the future like what another future i guess i made it moment would be it's hard to say but i think what it matters to me or like what makes me feel good is when younger women like compliment me or like say mm. you know you're like a role model or i think you're doing really good like i had um this girl we went to high school together but we were like when i was a senior she was a freshman so we the age gap is like three years but she, i guess she like taps into me you know on social media and stuff and one day she messaged me and she was like you know i i think i like posted some recently and she was like i really just love i have to say it, i really just love your content like it's really inspiring to me like i've always looked up to you i was about to cry like i was actually really about to cry <laughs> over that because i was like i'm up here i'd be stressed out like i'm not doing nothing you know and then like people do notice like i think that's really important and i I try to like remember that kind of stuff, you know, when I'm when I'm creating like people do care. It helps. Yeah. It helps a lot. I feel like having more of those comments or like, you know, DMs, like I guess like being able to see and hear the impact. Yeah. That I think would be more of like an I guess more consistent messages. I don't even know what that would look like, but just hearing people say like this is good. Like I, I see what you're doing and I like it. That's when I'll probably start to feel more like, hmm, I'm making an impact. Because I think it's less about like, I made it per se. And it's more of like, oh, this is actually having the in intended impact that I wanted it to have. So that's going to be my I made it moment. Yeah. Damn. That like, I was now, so you, excited. You're going to love when you hear this because you literally stopped like right as they was. Oh, oh, that's great. It's great. It's great. It I'm already, I'm already, yes, I love that. Oh, um, great. Yes, I like yeah. that. That was a great answer. Thank you. Um, Did you have your I had it or uh, I made uh, it? No, yeah, I got it. I got it. I haven't had it. Oh, I was like, I had, but I have the one? answer. Oh, okay. I have the answer. Yes. Is it a secret? It's not a secret. I'll share it here. Okay. I think for me, um, it's been, or maybe I should give myself some, give myself some. Yeah. Let me is it, my, is let it give, a pause? Let me give myself some of this. Some of this, some of this, because I like D'Angelo. You feel me? Oh, you, you know, okay. I see what the vibes are. Okay. Yeah, so what we're going to do is what I believe mine is, is um, to be quite honest, I, I'm, I've always been um, attracted to language. Mm -hmm. and attracted to um, not only, I think of my medium of choice is obviously, you know, orating words and messages and things like that. But I think um, what I've always respected more than anything is um, the power of literature, the power of just the written word, you okay. know? Yeah. Um, and I, I, I'm definitely, you know, self-reclaimed and certainly um, a writer of my own right, uh, creatively especially. Yeah. And I think if you meet me, I can make you feel what, I, what I'm saying. I can make you pay attention to me. I can persuade you. I can entertain you. I can educate you for whatever it is that I want to say. Right. But being able to do that when I'm not in the room feels like 
I don't know, it feels way more powerful. Mm, okay. You know, because I think about the people who talk about, you know, books like, you know, The Alchemist, books mm. like, you know, All About Love, books, you know, shit, the Bible for even some people. Words, words written, truly moving you, feeling mm. like they were specifically for you, that mm. change your literal perspective, that actually gave you an answer, that actually... Mm created a step to something else Mm -hmm. and I think that's something that would be my I made it moment like either that can come in the form of a book an article like are you gonna write an autobiography I mean one day (laughs) that's that's good that's good (laughs) right (laughs) you feel me that's it whatever it is but no it's it's, I think um that's something because I think when it comes to I when I ask myself what is that creative thing that I haven't tapped into yet or mm-hmm. haven't given enough time to, um, I think I write all the time. Yeah. But it's about putting those things out, too. Mm-hmm. I put out I put out all these other things. I'll, I'll, literally, yeah. I'll literally two-step in front of my motherfucking, in my kitchen. <laughs> I'll make myself look ridiculous. Yeah. I'll take, you know, uh, spicy pictures, you feel uh. me? I do all these things that, with no shame. Right. But I can't even, you know, not present myself. Maybe a blog. Maybe you could start with a blog and then lead up to something your even book. bigger. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I'm, 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 your New York Times bestseller. I take that. You know? I think I'm, I'm definitely um, going to think of something, and I already have ideas for a bunch of things. We can't wait to see it. Yeah, yeah, but I think I'll that would be my have ideas. Yeah, that, that would be my yeah. I made it moment. Is uh, truly that's a good one. Um, writing something and putting it out, and that's it being and being able to be available and being received. More yeah. than anything, um, but yes, this that's the been... luck with that man. Yeah, you, I mean, I'm not, you're, I know it's gonna happen. Oh yeah, it's yeah. gonna happen. It's yeah. gonna happen. It's definitely gonna happen. I'm gonna be at the um, the book signing. <laughs> I'm gonna be at the book signing. Like this, is my friend, y'all. Hell yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But no, so we've done a thing. Man, we did a thing. What we, we did, did a thing. We did a wow. thing. Yes, yes, yes. So before you go, I want you to tell everyone. How they can support you, follow you, okay. do all the things. Period. You feel me? Um, so I'm I'm not one of those people who has like the same handles because I don't necessarily want people to know my Twitter. But you know what? I'm gonna let y'all. Y'all can know my Twitter. It's um at thoughts by Monty underscore. My uh, Instagram is Monty Elizabeth underscore. Um, TikTok is Monty Elizabeth no underscore. Okay. That's the only ones that are of interest <laughs> if that makes any sense yeah yeah you you the one gave you something well, I was like, yeah. <laughs> well, nobody, well nobody said nothing you know else. what nobody said nothing that's all I gotta say okay, okay. yes yeah, so feel free to follow me um I make really cute reels fashion beauty there's music content as well cats if you like cats there's cat content I have three cats I am a cat lady um so you could watch those as well uh, what else? That's gonna really bring bring them to the yard oh right God. there. Them damn yeah. cats. <laughs> They're popular. Like everybody's okay. into cat like the on TikTok, some of the highest like um liked videos are cat videos. I bet. And I'm like, God, I really gotta tap the fuck into these you cat do. videos. Get, yeah. Cause I'm like, God, damn. my cats are just crazy. It's hard to film them. Yeah, I get They're that. They're insane. I get that. But yeah. So that's what y- y'all can check that out. I get that. Yeah. I feel that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um Oh, thank you. First thank you for having me. This is dope. I'm, glad. I'm so glad that I could, you know, chat with y'all. Hell and yeah. Be my your podcast is awesome, and I'm glad I'm a part of it. Okay, this is awesome. Hey, <laughs> yes. And I'm glad that you were my inaugural guest in this new setup and studio with the I new visuals. Special. I hope everybody who's watching is feeling, you know what I'm saying, the vibes, because there'll be more to come. People sitting right here where she's sitting. Period. And, you know, and great lighting and great and great vocal and all of those all things. All of it. Mm-hmm. Yes. So what I want to do okay. is let everyone know. If you don't know, you should know. You can follow the Simply King podcast everywhere podcasts are available. Um, And make sure that you stream. Make sure you like, rate, and subscribe on whatever form or platform that you are on. Um, You can follow me at Kings underscore memoirs on all things if you want to get content on black wellness and a black man evolving. You can follow the podcast at Simply King Pod on IG and also on the Facebook page as well. Uh, that's just Simply King Podcast. Check it out, check it out, check it out. 
Um, this is family size content, like I always say. So you'll be mad as hell if you eat that whole bag of chips by your damn self. So give some to somebody else. If you like it, then go ahead and share it. So uh, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Um, and yes, make sure that you do that uh, send it on challenge. That send it on uh, call to action. And I'll see y'all next week. This has been the Soulfully Conscious Podcast for Humans Simply Being Humans. I've been Rodney Perry, also known as King. This has been Imani Elizabeth Watson. Period. <laughs> Thank you so much. And this has been Simply King. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Drippin' for, but you gon' have to wait. But when you get it, lick it like a candy cane. Keep your eyes on me.